today we're delving into the world of Salesforce Flow and how to smoothly transition from simple to more complex flows. If you've ever found Flow a bit daunting, stick around because I've got some insights to share. First off, let's address some common misconceptions about starting your flow journey. If you're a newbie, it's essential to set realistic expectations. Flow is not just a fancier version of workflow rules or process builder. It's a powerhouse capable of much more. So let's start simple and build up from there. No need to jump straight into complex flows and set yourself up for frustration. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a minute to thank this video's sponsor, Own Company. Own Company is a leading data protection platform that empowers organizations to protect, manage, and activate their SaaS data. To find out more, head over to salesuspend.com forward slash backup to get a free trial of Own and retake ownership of your Salesforce data. Once you've got a few simple flows under your belt, it's time to level up. I've outlined some key knowledge areas crucial for tackling intermediate and advanced flows. First up, understanding the concept of process. It's not about technology, it's about mapping out the steps an organization takes to achieve its goals. Develop your process skills and maybe try your hand at process mapping. You need to know the essentials. Leads, opportunities, accounts, contacts, cases. These are the standard objects you should be best friends with. Understand the required fields and grasp the basics of field types. It's not about memorization, it's about solid conceptual understanding. Start by asking yourself the following essential questions. What are the standard field types? How were checkbox, pick list, text, and number fields used? How can I pass one value from one field to another? Do I need to convert values and formats? Do I need a formula resource? Now, let's explore relationship types. Ask yourself questions like, what are the available relationship types in Salesforce? How are objects related? And how can you grab the field values you need? Dive into the schema builder for this. Trust me, it's a game changer. If you're working with record triggered flows exclusively, you might not need a deep understanding of variables initially. However, when you venture into other flow types or involve loops within any flow, including record triggered, a good grasp of variables and collections becomes essential. Variables act as temporary containers for values in your flows, with various types designed for specific kinds of values, Record variables, in particular, hold all field values for a specific record type. In some situations, you'll need to store multiple values together, and these containers are known as collections. Collections store several values for processing in your flow. Keep in mind the collection actions and elements are limited, often requiring looping through variables to process each member individually. Loops are crucial for handling multiple related records in a process. When working with flows, there are limitations tied to the number and type of elements used. To process multiple records, you often need to loop through them. However, using loops comes with potential challenges. The elements inside a loop execute in each iteration, and the number of iterations isn't always known during the build. Mistakes in the loop can lead to issues in every iteration, requiring significant cleanup afterwards. Designing loops within loops requires careful consideration. Flow fault handling involves creating paths that diverge when errors occur in flow elements. While these fault paths provide an alternative route, the flow still generates an error email akin to avoiding an accident but ending up with a scratch. It's recommended to build fault paths, but the preference is to avoid using them. To anticipate and manage various outcomes, employ decision elements. For instance, use a decision to check if get elements found records by performing a null check, allowing you to proactively handle potential issues. When preparing a flow for deployment, it's crucial to conduct development in a sandbox or a development org for safety. To ensure readiness, thoroughly test all paths in the flow, especially those dependent on various criteria using appropriate test data. Initiate initial testing in debug mode, which allows the use of a rollback option for most flow types without altering org data. Carefully follow the debug log step-by-step -step on the canvas's right panel, paying attention to essential record IDs and field values for process automation. Examine error messages meticulously. 
identifying the flow's path and pinpointing where and how it halted during faults. After eliminating all faults, activate the flow and run it on multiple test records. In case of errors, review the fault email, focusing on the top error message and scrolling down for additional details at the bottom. This information often includes specifics about the error, the executed element before the error, and is crucial for troubleshooting. And there you have it, the roadmap from simple to advanced Salesforce flows. Remember, start small, build your skills, and don't rush into the deep end. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more Salesforce tips and tricks. Happy flow building.